These videos are brought to you by HobbySilicone.com, a byproduct of NPK Enterprises. Quickly, I'll show you how to make a two-part mold from this hand sculpture that I made in wax. You'll need a Sharpie marker. What I like to do is try and figure out where my seam line will be. So I'll draw that around the sculpture. The reason I do this is to show where the clay will meet on the sides. You don't need a lot of supplies to make this mold, but you will need some water-based white clay to do your clay layup wall, as well as a wooden board or a cafeteria tray will work just as well. You'll want some cellophane to cover the back side of your sculpture, the one that will be exposed to the clay. This will protect it from getting any important details filled up when you're making your mold. To make this mold, you'll need a handful of materials. For starters, a clay knife or some kind of kitchen knife or butter knife, and a metal kidney. It's flexible. And most importantly, a couple of brushes that are flat. Not a round, but a flat brush. A big one and a small one. This will help you get the perfect edge. And then of course, water. Purchase a bag of powdery white clay. It's great stuff, very smooth, consistent, and it's very inexpensive. You can use it over and over for your molds if you take good care of it. You can just start packing the clay around your sculpture. The idea here is that you take your clay and get it all the way up to that black line that I drew with my Sharpie around the sculpture. You're probably asking, well, why the heck are we doing this? It doesn't make any sense. Why do we want one side clay? Well, the idea is, is that we're going to build a box around this, and then we're going to fill the top side with silicone, and the clay is representing the second half of the mold. So if we make this side look nice and pretty, then that means that our mold's probably going to fit together very well. Now. Here's the bit of a trick. You use these flat brushes and you wash away this edge. You want a nice right angle here. You want it to meet up against the sculpture nice and crisp. The letter L right there. That's what I'm talking about. When the edge of the sculpture meets the edge of the clay in a nice hard edge, that means that your seam line, when you make your mold, should, in theory, be almost invisible. The clay layup process usually takes about an hour. For your first time, you may consider that it might take up to two hours if you also include your prep time to do something about this size. Any bigger, maybe three hours. I got some water clay on my actual sculpture. There's no details to worry about, so I can just kind of wipe it off with a paper towel. I'm adding my pour spout at the wrist, making it giant. Usually I make it very small. Now I'm also using the end of my Sharpie to make registration marks or keys. It's a real quick and down and dirty way of doing it. I do it fairly close to the sculpture. And now I'm just cutting the edge off because I'm going to put foam core up against the sides here. I'm just going to wash it down a little bit. I have enough pieces cut here for each side of the mold, as well as my glue gun and my hot glue sticks. I'm just setting them up on the side and then gluing them across, leaving one edge of the foam core right at the corner as you see right there. One side overlaps and the other side is flush with the edge. It's so easy. Even a kid can do it. Hobby Silicone sells small amounts of their silicone, such as their Moldmaster 2125 2 pound and 5 pound kits with Green Catalyst. I'm using a 10 pound kit of 2125 silicone for this project. Now the cup's on the scale, I tear out the weight, so now it's back at zero again. And now I can add my silicone into the cup.
Now that I have 500 grams of silicone, I need to tear off the scale and weigh out 10% of the catalyst, which would be 50 grams. Stirring the catalyst and silicone together has to be an accurate process. The silicone is done being mixed when it'll be an even green color. The trick to get bubbles out of your silicone is by doing what's called a high pour. This is when you pour a very thin stream of silicone into your mold up to the line that you made with your Sharpie. After the silicone is cured, peel off the sides and then cut away any extra silicone that might have bled out onto your sculpture. Carefully remove the white clay from your sculpture. And take your flat brushes, go in with some water and wash away the clay that's right against your sculpt so you don't damage it. Once this side of the sculpture is clean, take Vaseline and another flat brush. Apply Vaseline to the flange around your mold. This will make sure that the parts don't fuse together when you pour your second half. Glue your foam core walls into place and fill with silicone. Once the silicone cures, you're able to demold it and open your mold. Using your X-Acto knife, cut in your pour spout, and now we're ready to pour some resin. You'll need cups, a brush, tongue depressors, baby powder, and latex gloves. Brush the mold with baby powder. And this acts as a great mold release. Blow out or tap out the remaining powder out of the mold. MPK70 resin comes in part A and B. Mix the two in an even mix and pour and fill your mold. When it cures, it'll turn a white color. If you want your resin another color, you can purchase various tints. Tap the mold on the side to get out the air bubble until it starts to cure. Before casting, you can tape your mold together or use rubber bands, even put a board together and rubber band it. Anyway, I use tape and you can just remove it, open it, and pull out your resin piece. As you can see, there's barely any seam and I just use tape to hold the mold together. And that's how you make a two-piece mold. I've compiled a list of materials which you'll need to do this project. Order today.